Our Father, who art in heaven, as a body we congregate in these council chambers, we pray for thy divine guidance, that we may do all things well, according to thy holy will. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Thompson. Here. Ms. Stevenson. Present. Mrs. Hanrahan. Here. Mr. Sanker. Here. Mr. Breek. Mr. Braden informed us that he was be absent this evening. He's <laughs> gone fishing. I forgot to bring a sign. That's <laughs> He's gone fishing in Michigan. So. Um, we have two requests to amend the agenda. The first is a letter from Mayor Williams, um, a request for executive session that we would move to communication number four. And the second request is an ordinance to change appropriations for the year 2018 and declaring an emergency. That would be K2 under introductory readings of ordinances. It would be the second, or the second ordinance for consideration. Mr. Bonsall. Thank you, Madam President. I move that we amend the, gen the agenda as stated. Seconded by Mr. Thompson, excuse me. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is the minutes of the September 11th, 2018 meeting. Those were emailed to you um, prior. Mr. Clark. Move to approve the minutes as of read. Seconded by Ms. Stevenson. I'm trying not to cough here. <laughs> is there any discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next, we have a presentation of a life-saving award by um, Chief Kramer. Would you like to come forward with our recipients? Sergeant Dave Lewis and Officer William Dossenbach. Doss Dossenbach. <clears throat> It's nice to have you here a couple of meetings in a row. We yeah. like, uh, we enjoy these uh, positive things. So, uh, Madam President, members of council, thank you for uh, allowing me to do this tonight. We're going to present the life saving award to uh, two of our members, two separate incidents. So, I'm going to start with Sergeant uh, Lewis. Can I turn this on? Because we have <laughs> absolutely. Slide, I, I don't know how it works, but you're I, welcome I, to I, do it. I hope I do. But <clears throat> it should be set up. So, kind of just to set things up for you on uh, <clears throat> was, yeah, September 4th. Uh, Sergeant Lewis was dispatched over to 3805 Edwards Road. I, there's uh, like an eating, eating disorder clinic there, and uh, they were having trouble with one of their patients. Uh, and uh, you said it was coming on? Oh, there it is. Now it's green. So he was having trouble with a patient there. Uh, they were having trouble with patients, uh, having some emotional issues. Uh, so Dave and, and uh, uh, police officer Matt Betcher responded over there and uh, I guess the uh, they wanted to get the uh, the patient some help and uh, two of the um, were they nurses Dave or uh, were they one was a psychiatrist one psychiatrist uh, we're gonna sign a hold on him so you could take him down to the hospital and uh, I wanted to play just a short clip of the video just to kind of give you an idea at least from our perspective how quickly things happen um, I won't spend if I don't get it here shortly I won't spend too long on this but uh that there was just trying to give you an idea you know <coughs> what maybe could have happened if, if sergeant lewis didn't act the way he did um it, it goes on there's 
we stopped it there, but there was a significant struggle, but you can't see anything because of the, uh, the body cams. But, uh, the, you know, the officers were assaulted. Luckily, nobody was seriously injured. But um, Dave's... Uh, didn't hesitate to, to take action. He grabbed the subject, uh, pulling him off the wall, brought him safely to the ground. Uh, other officers joined in. They were able to get the guy some help, and uh, <coughs> luckily it ended without anybody really being harmed. But uh, Dave, uh, I see your family out here tonight. They should be uh, very proud. They really should. Um, you do an amazing job. You are definitely deserving of this life-saving award, and I can't thank you enough for your commitment. And you know, you do it every day. Um, just kind of just gives people an idea of what we go through. So thank you, Dave. Thank you. So I don't have a video for the next one. There's no body cam, but um, uh, Bill Dawson Beck. How long have you been here, Bill? Under a year. Under a year, yeah. So Bill's a relatively new officer. But on August 31st, uh, Bill was dispatched to 4030 Smith Road for uh, an unresponsive person. And when Bill got there, um, subject was, it was on the ground, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, not breathing, no pulse. And uh, I know one of Bill's co-workers put something in our system uh, to acknowledge what Bill, what Bill did, and what he said is that uh, Bill didn't hesitate. He right away went over and, and started administering first aid, started CPR, and and Bill kept that up until the life squad got there, the Norfolk Fire Department. They took over, um, which seems like an eternity when you're doing CPR. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. no doubt. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I don't. Uh, I think. In all likelihood, Bill's actions probably saved this guy's life because the life squad was able to get a pulse on their way to the hospital. And uh, again, uh, you know, these guys take action. And if Bill had hesitated, we don't know what might have happened. So we have another life-saving award to uh, to give out, and this one goes to Bill Dawson back, and it's, it's deserved without a doubt. Bill. Uh, if you can come up to the microphone so people can hear I'm going into my 23rd year here at the city of Norwood as a police officer and the services that we get in the city. And I'm speaking as a resident as well as an employee. Um, we had some bloodborne pathogen uh, exposures that day. And Chandra Corbin from the health department was there in a, in a minute to help us out and kind of ease our fears and concerns. But, you know, our, our fire department, we work closely with them. They do a phenomenal job. Mr. Gary and his support in the law department is phenomenal. And I mean, there's nothing but good things on the horizon for this city. And I'd just like to say thanks to everybody. And it's an honor to serve by, with these young guys. I call them young guys because I'm old now. They look like babies. <laughs> yeah, so, but I, I really do. It's an honor to serve with them. And especially, we just hired another group of six officers. And like I said, there's nothing but bright things on the horizon here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sergeant Lewis. appreciate my supervisor, Sergeant Vicker, Sergeant Brucker, Sergeant Kinnelhoff for, for uh, supporting me. You guys do a great job. Thank you for all the great training. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, and especially Sergeant Kinnelhoff because he was in my interview panel. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> comments? Comments? Any comments from Council? Mr. Sanker. Yep. Yeah, really just... Uh, it, it just goes to show, I mean, quite frankly, you know, the training that you guys receive and when called to duty, as you do every day, you don't see this type of stuff every day. But when it happens, it's the training instincts that I believe kicks in and where you didn't have a chance to back down or even think twice, you just reacted the way you were trained to do and what you would would do if it was a member of your own family. So for that, we thank you guys for your service and congratulations. It's proud, proud of you. So thank you. Any other comments? 
I, I usually say that when the police show up, usually half the people are upset about it. But in this case, I don't think anybody was upset about any of you responding. So thank you very much. Thank you for all that you do every day. Thank you, Chief, for uh, sharing this with us, too, and Captain Bellman. Thanks for sharing it. And I would be remiss, uh, Chandra, thank you for um, the training that you had in your bloodborne pathogens, too, in the health department. I think the, you know, silent, uh, silent departments that do great work all the time. So thank you as well for the work that you do. <laughs> all right. Um, we have one request to address council, but it's not on um, agenda items, so we'll deal with that a little later on no reports of standing committees or second and third reading of ordinances. So we'll move on to um, the introductory reading of ordinances and resolutions. And the first is an ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Service Safety to advertise for bids and to enter into a contract for the Forest Avenue Reconstruction Project, Ohio Public Works Commission Project number CB09V slash CB. 10V within the city of Norwood, Ohio, in declaring an emergency. I can tell you that this was reviewed by the Financial Planning and Supervision Commission as well as the um, supervisors, and this was approved for the agenda. Mr. Sanker. Madam President, I would uh, recommend we have all three readings, and I, Mr. Gears, I believe, is in, is here if anybody in the chambers questions. if we would could come up and give us a, an overview on the extent of the project and the timeline for which it should be completed. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Thompson. <coughs> Call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Are there any comments? The motion on the floor is to suspend the rules, have all three readings, and to have Mr. Gears come forward and give us a, an overview of the project. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. <coughs> yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes, sir. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Mr. Gears, you want to come up first before we have the three readings? Thank you. This is the, uh, we were at the uh, Financial Planning Commission meeting, and uh, this is the uh, grant slash loan that uh, was approved last year that we applied for for the Hamlet County Public Works uh, Committee and uh, it is for Forest Avenue reconstruction and that would be from Highland Avenue down to Norwood Avenue and with that reconstruction it would include new uh, storm source, new storm source system, um, new water main, new valves and uh, new curbs, sidewalks and driveway aprons uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but uh, I think it, well, it was in TA's packet, but that's a $704,000 or $5,000 uh, project. Out of that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the grant was about $450,000. Uh, we have a 30-year interest loan. Uh, uh, Interest-free loan. Please? Interest-free loan. Yeah. Yeah. You just said 30-year okay. loan. Yeah, yeah. interest-free loan. Uh, for uh, about $181,000 and then along with that we have um, $100,000 that uh, we'll, we will put towards our share to $282,000 uh, from the community block grant funding. Where we're at the uh, engineering is done. Um, we want to, would like, that's what we want to present the ordinance to go out for bid sometime uh, mid-October. Uh, open up the bids first part of uh, November and then uh, be able to award the contract but basically uh, so everything will be ready to go for the spring of next year to start construction and really after next year right. first of the year they can start doing some of the uh, work on the street and that but like asphalt paving and that wouldn't be done or the base coat wouldn't be done until they uh, the blacktop plants uh, open back up from the winter so um, it should improve the uh, street a lot <laughs> <laughs> if you've been up and down that way. So yeah. that's that's what it is. And this is said the Financial Planning and Supervision Commission did approve yes. all of yes. this, so it's in their minutes. 
Any questions, Mr. Gears? Ms. Stevenson. Yes, thank you. Mr. Gears, uh, thanks for being here and your work on the project. Could you repeat um, what work is happening? You said storm sewers, curbs, driveways. Sidewalks. Sidewalks. Aprons and uh, water main work. And then what they will do is re put a new base in the street and then put asphalt base down and then put a fine coat over it and readjust all new manholes and everything. Okay. Okay. Yep, Ms. Stevenson. Thank you. Just one follow up. So it sounds like the project, some pieces will start in January and right. it'll go th through spring, like May of 2019? Yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, it depends on the weather and uh, <coughs> what the contractor, when they want to work, you know, schedule it in. But a lot of that work can be done in the winter of the, all the digging up of the storm sewers, replacement of the water mains and that. The uh, asphalt, like I said, that would be the last part of it. <clears throat> and that most probably would be done, I'm guessing, uh, maybe in May. And then with the final course, because uh, they let it, you know, we do a punch list and a walkthrough. Most probably being done mid-July next year. So it would be good to go. Basically, same thing you did on Marion Avenue several years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Any other questions of Mr. Gears? Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> so the motion on the floor then is to have to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Is there any other discussion? I already called the rule. <laughs> we already called the rule. Just have all three readings. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Public <coughs> Service Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Forest <coughs> Avenue Reconstruction Project, Ohio Public Works Commission Project Number CB09V slash CB10V within the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Service Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Forest Avenue Reconstruction Project, Ohio Public Works Commission Project Number CB09V slash CB10V within the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Service Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Forest Avenue Reconstruction Project, Ohio Public Works Commission Project Number CB09V slash CB10V within the City of Norwood, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Clark? Move to pass the ordinance. Seconded by Mr. Sanker. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes, sir. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is the ordinance that we added, an ordinance to change appropriations for the year 2018 and declaring an emergency. <clears throat> Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I would move that we would have all three readings of the ordinance. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Mr. Bonsall. Thank you, Madam President. So this ordinance, uh, just like the previous one, was approved in form uh, by the uh, our financial supervisors. It's basically uh, just an ordinance. We've the building department receives uh, some grant type money that they then pay out, and it's a very standard process that they have going on. Uh, and so they, we've already received the money from. Uh, into the city and so we just have to raise um, our appropriations to the level that we've already received funds for so they're looking we need to plan I mean we do this actually quite a bit we've I think we've had another one uh, that we've had to raise this fund for throughout the year and uh, we need to get better estimates from the building department so that we don't have to keep raising it all year long and we know the expected revenue so uh, the finance committee will probably will be talking about that and just trying to make sure that uh, we don't have to bring these kind of one-off ordinances but that's the only item on the uh, the uh, Exhibit A for it is just uh, raising the appropriations for Fund 97. So. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. <coughs> is there any other discussion? The motion on the floor is to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonsall. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Sanderman. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes, sir. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have all three readings. 
Ordinance to change appropriations for the year 2018 and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Ordinance to change appropriations for the year 2018 and declaring an emergency. Ordinance to change appropriations for the year 2018 and declaring an emergency. Mr. Bonsall. Thank you, Madam President. I would move that the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Thompson. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonsall. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes, sir. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We have no administration report, so we'll move on to other requests to address council, and that's um, Kathy DeNovo. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. If you please come forward and um, give us your name and address, and you'll have um, five minutes to address council. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Awesome. <laughs> and it's sugar free too, thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Kathy DeNovo. I live at 4419 Allison Street. Um, I contacted Leslie uh, back in June, on June 8th, regarding um, uh, a problem with trees. I call them weed trees because they uh, are not planted. <coughs> And it's gotten so bad that two, uh, three houses down from me and four houses down from me in the backyards, no sunlight hits the backyards. They've overgrown so bad. So that would be um, 4413 is the first house. That's the house where you guys had to deal with years ago with the drug problem and the landlord because the SWAT team had been there a couple years ago. I had been here at <coughs> the city council before. So it's 44, what did I say, 13 and 44, 11, I believe. But the problem is that nobody does. On my street, lucky me, their yards look <coughs> adequate in the front, but because the way your rules are with the health department, they don't they can't go to the backyard they have to have permission to look you know and that does no good you know unless i invite him to my house and you know oh hey come in because you can get a better view on the second floor to look back <coughs> so people know this so they don't they don't do anything about it and i have bought pictures i have i have lived here for 18 years and i have rehabbed my house myself i put a lot of sweat equity inside and out. I believe in Norwood. I think it's a, a gold mine. I understand government moves very slow. That's why I can't handle it. <laughs> he all would move way too slow for me. So what I did was, and if you guys want to do oh, this yeah. and pass them around, this is what my house backyard looked like. If you can see it, can you see it over there? Okay, we'll pass them around. But the first photograph is what my house looked like when I bought it 18 years ago. Okay? And so, so I will send to you photographs of surrounding areas. And, and, and one of the photographs, if you have any questions, ask me. My next door neighbor, here's the problem. I'm 4419. 44-17 does no landscaping in his backyard. Yard. We're lucky if he can mow his, back, his yard. All, his whole yard's weeds, okay? Um, he planted, I, they're, they're not evergreens, they're a fern green, I guess, okay? Four feet from his house and four feet from my fence. They have almost tripled in size because <coughs> the rainy weather we've had this year. I would be happy to have a drought next year. Maybe it'll, it'll die off. But I'm going to have problems with that. You know, why? I, I know the rules that if anything comes over to your property, I have the right to cut it. I tell my clients, I don't need a gun at my house. I need a pole chainsaw. You know, these trees get so high, I can't cut them down. Do you know how expensive it is to cut a tree? I don't have that kind of money. I mean, you guys have ordinance all over. I mean, if, if, if you've done so much for bringing corporate America to Norwood, 
I would like to see you start to work on the housing in this area, you know, to make people responsible. It costs no money, very little money, to just mow and trim. That's all I ask, mow and trim. Keep up with it. So what happens is, and I can see it happening, because 4413, it's growing on to the guy that lives, that is running the house in 4415. He doesn't have the money to go get something to, you know, these things are 30 feet in the air. And now his kids can't go out back and play basketball because the trees are hanging over. Well, the guy at 4417 doesn't do any landscaping, so I know that's just going to keep on growing over <coughs> his property. And, and on both sides of me, in about 10 to 15 years, my yard is going to be encased. And I have spent four summers doing my backyard, and I am not going to let anybody ruin it. And I don't care if I have to go over to their property and cut it down myself, because they don't care about it. You know, so all I'm asking is if you guys will take a look at this, and there's some pictures for you, and take a look at it, and see if there's something possibly that can be done to take care of it and stop it from happening in the future. I don't know. That's why I'm here. So we've got... Just to be clear, 4411 and 4413 are the ones that have weed trees, the big weed well, trees. Well, they're trees now. They ain't little. Oh, yes. but they're the ones. And then the 4417 has the tall ferns. That's the one, 4417. I mean, it's not tall. It's 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 only about, like, this high. Okay. But, I mean, you know, over time. I just want to make sure we have the right addresses. Yeah, yeah. well, you know. If you can get to the backyard, if anybody needs to come on my property to see them, uh, ask me. I'm, I'm usually there Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday unless I'm off golfing. So, I'd be more than happy to see, you know, what we can get done. I don't know. Do, do I get to take questions? Anybody go? Absolutely. If somebody has questions, I can tell you that <clears throat> people are not allowed to go on other people's property because it's private property oh so i know that that's why they can't go in the backyard unless they have your permission or somebody's permission I, I, that. that's the that's the problem i know that because because i went through the health department at first when i had this guy that had a tree in the back of the pro i don't mind trees but i got a water garden in my backyard i put in myself okay <coughs> dug it out put the rocks in plumbed it myself I requested for this guy to take his tree down be before it got too big because it 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 um, wasn't planted. There were that it was a property behind me in diagonal and then property straight behind me and the guy that lived straight behind me took the tree down because I know why he took the tree down. I won't go into that. But um, this guy never <clears throat> took the tree down. And the problem is there are these little balls on the leaves, okay? And it just clogged up my waterfall, just made it look totally disgusting in the fall. Now, I don't know if you all would appreciate that if you spent all that time on your house and you've got people all around you. I, I don't know where all you live. I don't know if you've got neighbors like I got. I'm sure you do if you live in Norwood. <laughs> Yours are pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments for um, regarding this? Ms. Stevenson? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I remember our conversation. I remember taking notes. I remember asking for photos. So thank you, Kathy, for coming and bringing those. Well, I, I, I want action. <laughs> yeah, that's very helpful. I, it sounds like, and I, I remember we talked about the courses of action you had already taken. And um, I did ask the question here at Council, were there other resources? And um, what I want to still encourage you to do, and, and, and maybe even try and work with one of our Council committees, is to think about how to approach neighbors about this because as, as um, President Lake has said we're talking about private property and so we, we need to be mindful of that but the other thing I wanted to make sure you know is for the changes that you would like to see you're actually able to work 
with the law department to propose a new ordinance. Well, that's what I would like. I, that's, I would like to propose some sort of ordinance that if a tree is not planted, it falls under the responsibility of the landlord or the homeowner that they must cut that down. So the finances are on their shoulders because two of the houses that I'm dealing with are landlords. And, and I, the, the one landlord that lives next door to me, she's turning in, she's going to be a slumlord. Because she's, this house was really quite nice and the, the, the tenants moved out and I even went to the landlord's house and told her that, the, you know, the backyard is horrendous. And I told her, I said, I'm going that back there. And I mean, weeds were six feet high. They were growing up above <coughs> my fence. And I told her I was going to her backyard. She didn't have a problem with it. She wanted to pay me. I said, no, I don't want your money. I helped her out. But you know what's funny? She didn't do any much more than what I did. Okay? So I put it all in a pile for her, and all she did was come back and spray weed killer so I mean unless you hit these people in the pockets they they won't they're not gonna do anything yeah I got more on my phone too <clears throat> Mr. Bonson. Uh thank you Madam President so first uh, I want to thank you again for coming so I really appreciate you sharing this with us when you talk about so I see, like, some of them are owned by owner occupied. Some of these are owner occupied. Uh, I was just looking up on the Hamilton County. Yes, um, forty four <coughs> seventeen is. Yep. He yep. he bought that house, which is amazing to me. Paid ninety thousand dollars for the house, and doesn't do yard work. No. Yeah, and then uh, forty four fifteen is owner occupied. Um, it looks like, according to the Hamilton County Auditor's site, yeah. is that maybe it's a two family. But I don't think that's no. a problem. No, yeah, yeah, no, I don't but the, know. But the second Who, one. Because cause 4415, the last I knew, was, was who's it show as an owner? Dan, well, Mr. Miller. Okay. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's, he's the owner, but he don't live there. He doesn't live there. Okay. No, he no, still no, has no. he's a landlord. There. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, and that guy is very nice. The, the renter's there, the guy is very nice, loads his yard, keeps his backyard, which is mostly cement, but he does. And then, but so I guess the other than forty four thirteen is def they rent out they have a rental registration. Have you talked to them, the owner there, Stacy? No, God no. He's the guy that had the problem. He's the one. That's the one where years ago, city council was all changed. I think Joseph was here, but the rest of you weren't. This goes back. Oh my, when was it? Two thousand and seven or something like that. When we had a raid on that house twice because of, of drugs and prostitution. And they had him to relinquish his, we almost had him on his unit to give it up, on the house to give it up. But it got screwed up. So, so you yeah, got so, to keep it. So the, I guess the question, well, the reason why I was asking that, yeah. um, have you been able to talk to any of the property owners or the renters? No, I'm not talking to them. Okay. That's no. They've been doing this for years. There's no, trust me, you're not you're not you know <clears throat> I talked to the one landlord next door to me and she's only I did most of the work she just came back with a uh, weed killer so no I'm not my responsibility no, is sorry. not to talk to these people okay that's why I just wanted to d double check I wouldn't check. do it without a, a police officer <coughs> there so we're talking 4417 4411 and 4413 well, 44, yeah, well, because he's got trees in the back okay. of him. But actually, I don't know the house. There's a house on the other side, and I don't know the name of that street that's in the back of my property that's diagonal. So it would be directly behind 4417. I don't know the name of that street, and I, but there's a lot. There's a lot Franklin? of trees. It's Franklin. Franklin. Okay. Well, that's one of the houses in, in, in question, too. Okay. But it's also, it's the whole street. If you just all come back, just come back to my backyard. Just take a look at it. Well, I mean, if that's appropriate, I mean, if you're giving permission, I'm sure that the health department would send somebody out um, to look. You say you're available you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, Wednesday, you can Thursday. see it on both sides. Okay. You know? So, I mean, if... <coughs> If 
if that's a start, I mean, where do where do we go from here? What do I do from here? How do I? Well, I think we. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if has step any step other is. suggestions. I would start with the health department if you would give them permission to come in your yard or come and look at what you're talking but, about. But, that but, might be but, a way to yeah, start. Yeah. So what? what do, but I, I have gone to the health department. I went to the health department. But have they been in your backyard? I well, I told the gentleman, and he told me there's nothing he could do about it with the trees. I said I told him they weren't planted. He said, well, you can only cut what crosses your line of property. So. <clears throat> that's true. Right. But I'm trying to change that. <laughs> because it's going to be I don't a serious play, problem. I don't want to play stump the law director, but. Uh, Good. Is there any other advice you can give us? Yeah. <coughs> um, uh, I'll, I can certainly talk with with uh, the health inspector yeah. um, I don't know how actively these uh, these things are normally enforced there's chapter 1759 of the Norwood codified ordinances that deals with uh, trees <coughs> weeds and grass right <coughs> um, but it's pretty broad pretty general um, and I'm not totally sure what remedy there is available from what uh, Ms. DeNovo is describing um, Other than that, what hangs over her property right. that you're free to right. cut. Oh, nothing well, hangs well, over my property right there, now. I there are care provisions that. about weeds. <laughs> yes. Uh, the the chapter doesn't define weeds, but you know. And there's uh, a height. There, there's a height restriction even on grass. Ra grass can only be restriction on grass, and there's descriptions of different kinds of weeds. Right. Um, but uh, I, I don't have any serious uh, experience in enforcing this particular chapter so <coughs> so my suggestion would be that we get in touch with the health department and, and have him get in touch with you it's a place to start if you will let him on your property that he can look and see what exactly what we're dealing with and maybe then we can go from there is there okay so uh, I don't know that we can we certainly aren't going to resolve anything tonight no 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 I, I really <coughs> I, I just don't think we're going to be passing up. an ordinance that that allows somebody either. else to cut a third party's trees and whatnot, no. uh, unless they're causing a literal nuisance, as described by the chapter. Yeah, uh, it is a nuisance. Well, I know that's as described determined. by the chapter, which includes, you know, the trees being in the streets, you know, that kind of thing. All right, there are definitions of what a nuisance is. <clears throat> All right, we have your contact information. Right, it's on there. Okay, so let us. I think that's a place to start. Okay. And then once we get that information back from the health department, then maybe we can go from there and see. Is I mean because I don't want to waste. You, I mean, I, I mean, is there, is it a possibility we can come up with something down the road? I don't know exactly what you're looking for, Mr. Bonsell. Yeah, I would. I would just say that. I mean, if there's any examples, maybe you might want to call around to other cities to see what, what they have. But if you have examples of ordinances that other cities have that help to rectify kind of what you're looking for, just keep that in mind, too, if you want to do some research. Well, I'm sure that's kind of like, you know, it uh, um, suburbs, you know, yeah, yeah. they if, have, you know, associations. Yeah, if you just let us know, like, if you find some examples of language that you think, oh, man, that's exactly what I think they need, you know, just keep us updated if you find it. So just okay. let us know. I can I can tell you we had a similar thing happen in our in on in, in our neighborhood where someone was had a um, <coughs> a greenhouse and it wasn't very green because there wasn't any sunlight coming through because there were weed trees growing and they were very actually they um, asked me what is the name of the person that lives you know what is do you know the address and what is the name and they communicated with them <clears throat> they sent a letter saying I have this greenhouse and I can't you know and they communicated like neighbors communicated and they yeah. worked it out and the, they both they kind of got it resolved between the this, two of them this, this is something that I won't do because uh, I won't go the people that are renting that house down there no I'm not walking I'm not calling Stacy up uh, because if the people can live with a backyard like that for weeks and and the house next door to them 
I'm not gonna, nothing I say is going to change a thing. I mean, it's 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 so bad you would you I wouldn't even walk back there. I wouldn't even want to know what's in that. No, you well, can tell by the one picture. I will um, um, make sure that somebody from the health department contacts you. Okay, <clears throat> it's a place to start, and then we'll ask him maybe to send us a report back once he gets there. Okay, it's a place to start anyway. I don't I don't know. I don't know right offhand what the resolution is, yeah. but it might be at least a place to start. I mean, because the health department can go and talk to him about it and tell him they have to cut it down. If, if yeah. they, they, you know, if there is a if there is an ordinance that substantiates yeah. that, so we can't legislate good taste. <laughs> well, if, trust me, it's not good taste. It's just <coughs> being responsible. I, I understand. Thank you. For your thank, you so thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the cough drop. <laughs> I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, we'll move on to um, unfinished business. And again, I'm going to start out with this. Um, last week, I um, spent the week gathering all the information um, to send out to all of the retirees um, for the new retirees health benefit program since it went into effect. and. Um, <clears throat> so, um, literally, I spent uh, most of the week um, handwriting out the um, manila envelopes to mail out to folks that contained a cover letter, the ordinance creating the retirees health care plan, the attachments, and then there was a page um, for each adult in the family to either nominate themselves or nominate someone else for the administrative committee. Um, those who are mailed, I brought them up here to City Hall on Thursday. Um, Dale Marshall put postage on them and it took them to the post office late Thursday. Um, <clears throat> over the weekend, it came to my attention that what was what had been in the clerk's office was the old um, attachments, the old appendices. And if you remember the first meeting, um, the law department had put out the ordinance and it had the old attachments, the old applications and the old registrations, they were the incorrect ones and I think Mr. Bonsell made, we pulled up the minutes, um, somebody made a motion and somebody else seconded it to substitute the ones that um, that we had discussed um, for the application and the registration that, that basically was in line with the ordinance that said that you had to be employed by January 1st, 1975. <clears throat> that, that was not the one that was mailed out. It was the old one. So I got the new ones. We switched them out on council, verified everything. Um, I spent Saturday and Sunday um, writing out the new letters with a little attachment that said, when you got your packet last week, um, it contained the wrong application and the wrong registration form. So accept my apologies, the, these are the correct ones in accordance with the ordinance, substitute the ones that you had with the new ones. Well, unfortunately, the second letter got there before the first packet did, so nobody knew what we were talking, what I was talking about. So, um, between Mr. Gatto and Mr. Walters and myself, we have probably been in contact with most everybody who's local in town from the retiree's health care plan. Um, <clears throat> but I have assured them that the packets are in the mail and they um, should get them. I'm, we're anxious to get these out because um, by the ordinance we have to have the meeting for the executive um, to elect the executive committee by the end of November. And so um, I just wanted to let you know that those mailings went out. There's a little bit of confusion about them. Hopefully tomorrow when everybody gets, some people got their packets and some people didn't. So I really think it's an individual thing depending on the post office and who got them. So um, just wanted to give you that update in case somebody um, asked you about it. I um, had no idea that letters would be delivered so much quicker than the, than the packets were. So um, apologies for the confusion, but hopefully it'll all be worked out. Um, on a good note, everybody that I've talked to today is very pleased um, with the new plan. So um, I found that to be very positive. They um, were happy that they didn't have to send in receipts and deal with the company. So that's my report on the retirees' health care plan. <clears throat> is there any other unfinished business? 
Ms. Stevenson. Thank you. Um, at the last regular meeting, I shared out in our committee report that we were considering um, possibly even adding meeting times just to allow for more engagement. And so I just wanted to touch back on that. One of the suggestions that was made was to potentially meet ahead of our regular meetings, like maybe from six to seven. So we may be scheduling another meeting, but just wanted to get feedback from the committee members as well as any other council members who might want to participate in um, an additional forum for more, um, to provide more time to hear from residents. Comments? Mr. Just to Thompson? clarify, this is, this is a part of the uh, economic and community engagement. That is true. So when I said committee, I did uh, mean economic development and community engagement, that committee. Thank you for the clarification. <coughs> Comments? Were you looking for, you were looking for additional feedback? I think I got additional feedback. That's very helpful. Um, <laughs> I know that residents are interested in sharing their thoughts and I'm trying to be mindful, um, we as a member of, of committees and of this body um, often have full days before we have meetings and so um, I've personally tried to steward our time so we're not meeting more than 90 minutes as a committee. Um, this last meeting did go longer and so um, if you have reflections after this meeting, I would be open to those too, but it, it, I'm strongly considering beginning to hold multiple meetings where we divide out our goals rather than try and cover all of them um, in the same meeting. Thank you, Ms. Stevenson. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other unfinished business? Any new business? Mrs. Hanrahan. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I've been working with the Parks and Recreation Committee, and I had been taking some, sorry, thank you. <laughs> I had been down to Burtwood Park and Millcrest Park and noted that the uh, swing seats needed to be replaced. Um, I did contact uh, Mr. Gears, who did have Public Works uh, replace those. So I want everybody to know that there are new, safer swing seats on the swings at Marsh and Burwood and thank Mr. Gears for taking care of that. Thank you. Marsh and Burwood and Millcrest? I didn't see the ones at Millcrest. Oh, Marsh, and Marsh and Burwood. Marsh and Burwood? Great. <clears throat> thank you, Mrs. Hanrahan. Thank you, Mr. Gears. Any other new business? Ms. Stevenson. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to announce our regularly scheduled economic development and community engagement committee meeting will take place on Thursday, October 4 at 7 p.m. And we will tackle some, but not all, of our committee goals at that time. <laughs> and it's here in council chambers? Here in council <coughs> chambers at 7 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Hanrahan. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to bring up uh, water bills real quick and and paying those. I learned something this month. If you're if you pay your water bill through the bank and they send a paper check and not an electronic check, it can take several weeks for these to get processed. Um, I know I sent mine on the fifth. They got processed on the twenty second. Um, through all my, I was up here several times talking to the tax department, the water department, and if, I mean, and then you're getting charged a late charge, and I was get, I got charged like $39 for the late charge. <clears throat> but if your bank is sending paper checks and a lot, uh, not electronic checks, you need to have them sent to City Hall and not um, to the address on your bill. And I didn't know that until this week, and I just wanted to share that. And a lot of you might not know if your bank is sending electronic payments or paper payments. There is a um, drop box, Mr. Gears, is that correct? Right outside of City Hall on Elm Avenue where you can yes. drop a check in yes. your water bill? If you can also pay the water seven. bill online. That's a secure box? Yes. You okay. can also pay it online through the water department. 
I like to pay mine through the banks. That's how I keep my records. So you can pay it online through the water department. And oh, yes. that will get processed much faster, will it not, Mr. Gears? I don't mean to put you on the spot either, but... But they also do not take checks. <coughs> and some people still work with checks. So this is if you pay it through your bank and your bank does a paper, paper check, check versus an electronic fund transfer. Yes. Thank you for the information, Mrs. Hanram. Mr. Bonsell. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. So this is very helpful information to know for people. I know I use the online bill pay on mm -hmm. my, and I think that's what you're referring to, is like the online bill pay. Yes. I use that quite a bit on my bank, so uh, I wouldn't have thought to send it to City Hall, which uh, just so everybody knows, that's 4645 Montgomery Road, uh, instead of sending it to, um, you know, the P whatever the box is that's on the, uh, the bill. So. No, very helpful. I just want to thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, it is helpful. So a lot of people use online banking now. <clears throat> is there any other um, new business? Okay. <clears throat> we'll move on to communication. And the first is um, Fuel Collective regarding the Trex liquor license. I only put this on the agenda to let you know that we had already dealt with this at the last meeting, but we did send um, letters, the clerk's office sent letters to all of the departments and there were no objections. So I just wanted to let you know that, um, so you can probably just receive and file this, but I wanted to let you know that we did, uh, that the clerk's office did send out those letters. Mr. Bonsall. Thank you, Madam President. I would move that we uh, receive and file the letter from the Liquor Control Division and to take no further actions. Thank you. Second? <coughs> Seconded by Ms. Stevenson. Is there any discussion? Mr. Bonsall. Thank you, Madam President. So this is, again, this is one that we already approved at the last meeting. Correct. But even though we approved, like, the form uh, for somebody to do the treks, we still, for any time somebody, like, switches, uh, wants to change ownership, or wants to move their license or anything, we still have the opportunity as the legislative authority to object to it. So just so citizens know, we don't ha we're not approving a second one. We're literally getting the form that we would have gotten anyways to inform us that it actually is going to move. So... If we don't take any action with this form, then that just means that the Division of Liquor Control knows that we don't, we're not objecting to it. Thank you, Mr. Bonsall. <clears throat> is there any other discussion? The motion on the floor is to receive and file the letter and to take no action. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonsall. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is a letter from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding La Luna LLC for a new uh, C1 license. And again, this, these were sent out to all the departments and there were no objections. <coughs> and any um, objections have to be postmarked by October 1st. Mr. Sanker. Yeah, Madam President, a couple questions. on This application is for a new liquor license on a transfer of any kind it's a, a new license and the address that is stated on here when you go by there there's there's nothing in that particular um, address there to the left of it there is some kind of a business and to the right of it is some kind of business and two down is a laundromat I don't know that we would want to create a new liquor license um, in the city when there's not even there was not even a, a business in that particular building uh, so the other thing I've found odd I'm, I'm not big on new liquor license tra transfers are one thing if, if it's for economic development um, but the filing date on this was 326 2010 seems rather odd that they filed for this liquor license eight years ago and either the state kind of just found it and sent it down here or um, you know why it's been you know on file for eight years uh, I think this is one that has been on a waiting list and one became available mr. Gary can you confirm this I, I can't confirm it definitively but my understanding is well I, I know that the c1 
liquor license for Pal Cincy, which was the Sherman Market, Sherman Market. Uh, was uh, denied, and that their appeals have run. And so I think that might be the the one that became available, if you will. Yes, Mr. Sanker. So they may be purchasing a license that just became available. Correct. That's my understanding. Well, I think they get it directly from the Liquor Control from Commission the control because, because Palsinsi's was actually denied because the renewal of it because of the it being a public nuisance and whatnot. Mr. Sanker. Because then the state took it back and had it on file there. It had to be put in reserve, I believe, the clause or something. I'm not like quite that. sure how. Yeah. I don't know what the terminology is, but yes. It had been in the, the Pal Cincy one had been in safekeeping since a few months after the Sherman Market was closed as a public nuisance, and we contested. The, the council authorized the the law department to, and the city to contest the renewal, and we did successfully. And I think so. Then there's a C1. So that then that became available. Became right. available. And just to clarify, point of thing. So a C1, according to the uh, Ohio Li Division of Liquor Control's website, it's uh, beer only, an original sealed container for carryout only. So it sounds like that very well could have been the Sherman Market one because they sold carryout beer. I, I can tell you the Sherman Market one was a C1. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that was the name of it, Pal. Pal Cincy LLC. P A L C I N C Y L L C. Mr. Thompson. Yeah, just so everybody knows, La Luna is a small little market right there um, on Montgomery Road, right next to that laundromat. There's a small little market yes. in there. That's what this is. This for. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. <clears throat> so just so everyone's clear, it's a a new license that they've been on the waiting list. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the C1 became available, which we believe is the um, Sherman Market. So what's your pleasure with this? And again, I note that any responses have to be postmarked no later than 10 one Any objections or anything? <clears throat> Oh, they were sent out to all of the departments and there were no objections. Mr. Bonso. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. I mean, if there if the police department wasn't concerned, if there's not a crime reason, if there's if they're not behind on their taxes, if there's not been any fire department uh, you know, concerns and if in the zoning district that it's in, if it's legally allowed, I'm not sure what grounds we would have to object to it so I'm just I'm gonna make the motion that we receive and file the letter and take no further action is there a sec second by Miss Stevenson <clears throat> any discussion call the roll please Mr. Bonzo yes Mr. Clark yes Mr. Thompson yeah Miss Stevenson yes Mrs. Hanahan yeah Mr. Sink yes All members present voting aye the motion carries <clears throat> Next is a letter from Jim Stiff regarding <clears throat> updated copy of estimated revenue projections. Dear Mayor Williams, attached is an undated copy, an updated copy of the Norwood Auditor's estimated revenue projections with rolling five year forecast as required by the fiscal emergency plan. The previous copy required adjustments to the projected revenue for gasoline excise taxes in funds 0203 and 05. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call. Sincerely, Jim Stith, Auditor, City of Norwood. Mr. Clark. Move that the letter be received and filed. Seconded by Ms. Stevenson. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Mr. Saker. Madam President, just, just kind of curious on the, the revenue, on the estimated fund revenue for the, the various uh, funds it starts with 04, 02, and 03. Uh, I didn't see them on on here anywhere, but 05 is on there. But. Uh, 
Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I will talk to the auditor to find out why those were missing. It could be because the, uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I'll find out from the auditor exactly why those specific funds aren't in this one. 02 and 03 are missing. Fund 02 and 03. <coughs> All right. Is there any other discussion? The motion on the floor is to receive and file the letter. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mr. Sanderhan. Yes. Mr. Sanger. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is a letter from Mayor Williams regarding executive session. Dear Madam President and members of Council, I write to ask that the Council consider holding an executive session at its regularly scheduled meeting this Tuesday, September 25th, 2018, as permitted by Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G4, to prepare for, conduct, review negotiations, or bargaining sessions with public employees considering concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. If you have any questions regarding this matter, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Thomas F. Williams, Mayor, City of Norwood. Mr. Clark. Move that the letter be received and filed and we go, to, we go into executive session to prepare for, conduct, or review negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment as permitted by o the Ohio Revised Code. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Stevenson. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes, sir. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We will move into executive session. We could have the TV cameras and sound turned off and um, all those in attendance to um, leave council chambers until we come back and uh, adjourn.
we are <clears throat> out of ex executive session and back in regular session. We do have one absent member, Mr. Bonsall. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I would move that we excuse the absent member, Mr. Braden. Seconded by Mr. Thompson. Is there any discussion? Ms. Stevenson? Uh, thank you. I um, omitted this during uh, new business, but I wanted to um, add under excusing absent members, I will need to be excused from our next meeting. I'll be traveling for work the week of eight, the 18th as well as the week of the 15th. So I just wanted to make that known. Thank you. All right, thank you. You gone fishing? <laughs> <laughs> the motion on the floor is to excuse the absent member. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzo. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Mr. Botzel. Thank you, Madam President. I move we adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bonzel. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Ms. Stevenson. Yes. Mrs. Hanrahan. Yes. Mr. Sanker. Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. This meeting is hereby adjourned.